Friends, this video is gonna be epic. I'm not only gonna share with you how I painted one of the most challenging paintings ever, but also how I used every trick in the book, from stencils to advanced glazing techniques to somehow paint a painting that's almost impossible to paint. One of the biggest mobile games on the planet, PUBG Mobile, asked me to create an epic art piece based on their Ptopia Design Award, that you can also join by the way. The Ptopia Design Project is a global community program from PUBG Mobile that allows artists, fans and players to be creative and to participate in contests for fan art, outfit designs, cosplay, etc. And your creations even have the chance to end up in the game. The goal is to build an art ecosystem for everyone who plays and is a fan of the game and to enhance multiculturalism. What a wonderful idea! And to do that, PUBG Mobile is introducing creative blocks into their game where players can find all of these things and the Ptopia Design Project under one roof. Which brings us here. Because yours truly here, your friendly neighborhood brustlinger, had the job to not only paint the Mac Daddy of fan art pieces, but to also push the limits of what you can do with physical paint in two weeks of time. I'll only say this, neon worlds and infinite details. So after coming up with a concept and building a canvas, the first piece of the puzzle was to paint the iconic lone survivor. Translating a video game character or a video game graphic into a realistic painting is already quite tricky, but this guy here, in particular, let me tell you, doesn't look like much, but he's much harder to paint than he seems. It's one of those things that's easy to paint, but incredibly hard to paint well. It's all because of the unique design of the helmet. If any of the curved lines or angles aren't 100% on point, the entire thing will look amateurish or just completely off. So I really took my time to make sure that all the lines and proportions were accurate before starting to paint any of the details. And I definitely didn't skimp on the details. I particularly wanted to capture the different materials of the helmet and give it a lot of depth to make the whole figure stand out. The metal, the glossy visor, the scratches and reflections. I even went so far as to incorporate some advanced cling film painting techniques to create the illusion of detail and some chipping effects as the icing on the cake. But this, this was the easy part. The next part was a completely different beast altogether. For this element, I had to paint a futuristic cityscape with neon lights and holographic projections. Where do you even start? The secret to making this part and really the entire painting work lies in the planning process. Planning is hands down one of the most underappreciated and undervalued aspects of a creative process. I personally always, and I mean always, spent at least a couple of hours just visualizing the process of painting something in my head. It's a bit like running simulations. Different approaches have different advantages and disadvantages down the line. And I always want to ensure that I understand what I'm getting myself into before I commit to something that might cause me a lot of headaches later. Initially, I wanted to use acrylic paint for this part, but I decided to go with oil paint in the end because I wanted this to be as vibrant and glowing as possible. I mean, it's a cityscape with neon lights after all. I'm not gonna lie, creating such a complex collection of glowing effects and intricate lines is really hard to do with brushes and paint. So the main approach for this was to start with the brightest parts and slowly work my way to the darkest areas. Painting in this order makes sure that the brightest parts of the scene are not painted with white paint, but rather illuminated by the white of the canvas. Many people don't know that the white of a good canvas is always brighter than white oil paint. So starting with transparent paint and using the white of the canvas allowed me to create some decent looking neon effects without even using neon paints. I also used some masking tape and some makeshift stencils after my first pass to clean up some of the lines and to round the whole thing off, I reintroduced some of the lights to really capture the futuristic Neon City vibes of the Cosplay Avenue. Next up was an even taller task. What could be more challenging than painting a cityscape with neon lights? Well, how about a floating city in the sky made up of thousands of blocks and geometrical shapes plastered 
was posters, holograms and screens, plus a floating frying pan. Sure, to paint this part I decided to switch to acrylic paints. There was no way that I would have been able to paint this part with oil paint. The fact that you have hundreds of overlapping elements, shapes and lines pretty much demands that you can quickly paint things on top of each other. And the best way to do that is to use acrylic paint that dries pretty much on the spot. My approach was to paint the largest shapes with a big brush first and to get more detailed with each subsequent layer. If I started this in one corner or painted one geometrical shape after another, this would have not only taken forever to paint, but I also think it would have practically been impossible, at least in a reasonable amount of time. The hardest thing about this part was probably the three-point perspective and making sure that I managed to create the illusion of depth while also capturing the architectural quality of the whole cityscape. All of the lines meet at one point in the distance and if only a few are off, it will throw off the entire effect. This meant using a lot of masking tape, straight lines and lots and lots of layers. Initially, I wanted to hand paint some of the floating letters in the scene, but then I thought to myself, what the heck, let's go all out. The painting was already shaping up to look pretty epic at this point, so I decided to bring out the big guns and use some stencils for the lettering. It's a small detail, but believe me when I say that small details make all the difference in this case. Having a text with nice crisp lines really makes a huge difference. And it was the icing on the cake to finish off this absolutely wild content avenue. The third and most challenging part was to create an almost 100% digital looking space with floating neon texts and a column that emits glowing light. I used a similar approach to the one I used in the first segment where I used transparent layers of paint for the brightest and most vibrant areas, only with the difference that I used acrylic ink this time. Acrylic ink is a bit more vibrant than regular acrylic paint, but most importantly, it already comes in a liquid consistency that's perfect for making glazes. I slowly work my way to the dark areas by putting glazes of paint on top of each other, using a hairdryer between layers to speed up the process. And then I was finally ready to tackle one of the parts that I was actually a bit intimidated by. Okay, 10 days and I don't know how many different painting techniques later, but I'm still far from being finished. I still have to do some of the lettering. I also wanted to recreate some of the more digital looking effects. I got stencils laying around here and uh, I even wanted to use some spray paint for this painting. But I gotta say, I really like it so far. It's super different, uh, quite challenging, but I can't wait to see how it looks finished. I guess a couple more days and then we can finally see how it looks. Let's go. Since this part involved some huge floating neon texts, that I needed to paint in a multi-step process, I decided to do them all with stencils. Something that I'm admittedly not super familiar and comfortable with, but more importantly, for someone as impatient as I am, is absolute pure misery. Let me tell you, getting the letters lined up properly took forever. And all the time, the only thing I could think of was what I would do if this thing didn't work the way I planned. There's probably a much better and more efficient way of getting letter stencils aligned properly, but eventually I managed to get everything onto the canvas and I just crossed my fingers and hoped for the best. I'll be honest, everything that I'm painting here doesn't exactly lend itself to being painted with physical paint. I would even go so far as to say it's impossible unless you noticeably simplify things. But I gotta admit, once I got started with the painting, I got kinda ambitious and I actually wanted to make this work. Ideally I would have loved to just use some vibrant blue spray paint to spray on the letters, but I didn't have that and I don't even know if something like an intense bluish cyan spray paint even exists. At least I don't think I've ever seen it. But 
If you know something like that, please let me know in the comments down below. It might be useful in the future. So instead what I did is I spray painted the letters white and then I put a glaze of acrylic ink on top of the white letters, which kind of worked. The film I used for the stencils was not waterproof, unlike advertised, so there was some bleeding and I had to make some corrections. The acrylic ink I used also could have been more vibrant for my taste, but after working on the letters for a bit, adding some outlines, some shadows and some glow, I ended up with something decently representing the super futuristic and digital looking Milestone Avenue. There's actually so much more to the creative blocks of the Potopia design project, like the music or art avenue, but for me, the last thing left to do was to make some adjustments, add some final details and bring all of the elements together to finish this epic project off. Before we get to the final reveal, I want to thank PUBG Mobile for this epic project, for supporting artists and for bringing people together through creativity. If you want to download and check out PUBG Mobile and the PDP award, check out the links in my description. And now, without further ado, let's get to the final reveal. Friends, I'm not gonna lie, this project was one of the most fun I had in quite some time. And I'm really happy that I got to paint something so different for a change. If you enjoyed this massive project and want to see me do more stuff like this, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. And with that said, thank you all for watching, see you in the next video and have a good one.